get started finishing the inside of the hole, I used a rotary sander with an 80 grit disc on it. My main objective here was just to knock down the obvious high spots on the inside of the hole. After giving the inside of the hole a thorough vacuuming, I then mixed up some fairing compound to help smooth it out. You'll notice I put tape along the shear line in order to keep that bright finish once I install the in whale. I also put it on the bright finishes to protect that from the fairing compound. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of curving the spatula to the shape of the hull to try to get it as smooth as I possibly could. I let the fairing compound cure for several days before I started going in and sanding it with an oscillating sander and again I was using an 80 grit pad. Once again my friend Pat Cahill came by and volunteered to give me a hand fiberglassing the inside of the hull. What we're doing here is laying out the fiberglass cloth ahead of time and cutting it to each of the sections. After all the pieces were cut, we then saturated the fabric with epoxy. We had started with the aft three bays, which you can see are already finished. Now we're working on the last one. If you're interested in knowing more about this process, you can watch this video here where I show how I did the entire process on the exterior of the hull. It's really great to have assistance during this process. It's a very time sensitive procedure considering that the epoxy only has a certain amount of pot life. It was really great having Pat work on the edges so that I could concentrate on the big areas. After we finished this coat of saturating the fabric, we then waited about three hours and added a second fill coat. Ultimately, I ended up putting three coats of epoxy on the inside. Later that evening, I went back to trim off the excess. This is the best time to do this as the epoxy hasn't fully cured and it's easy to cut with a utility knife. Several days later, 
I sanded the inside with 80 grit oscillating sander again. I followed up with a skim coat of fairing compound to smooth out the inside of the hole. Before I finish the inside of the hull, I wanted to determine and fabricate the soles so that I wouldn't mark up the final surface. After determining the height of the sole, I then made some templates to create the floor timbers for the boat. The floor timbers and the sole are going to be constructed out of the cedar planking that was donated by the original Victoria. Well, now that I've got all of the floorboards milled down to 7 16 of an inch thick, what I've done is I've cut some little eight, 3 8 inch spacers to space the boards evenly. So the next thing that I need to figure out now is this sideboard, which will have a little bit of curve to it. So in order to figure this out, what I've done is I've cut a board that's a little wider here <coughs> that can go in here like this. So in order to get that proper curve, I have got some spacers that I'm going to put in here like this. And then <coughs> I'm going to measure over at each station here. 
So that is four inches. So what I'll do now is mark at this point over four inches and make a little mark. And I'll do the same here. And that one is three, looks like three and a half. So three and a half. Oops, this way. So I'll get these other two me measurements and then I'm gonna run a batten on here and cut that out. Perfect. So I'm going to use this as a pattern for the other side. Right, good. So I will plug these holes with some cedar plugs. Um, so now that we've got the back sole all arranged and figured out, we'll move to the front one. Now I've got the floor timber all fitted in there now. And the other thing that I've done is I've created a mast step here for the mast to sit down in here. So this is made out of white oak and I have already primed underneath it and tapered it so it would fit in the boat. The other thing I did was I built a little channel underneath here so that when if moisture got in here, it would be able to, to drain away. So you certainly do not want the bottom of your mast to be wet because it, of course, could draw water up into it. So uh, this is a little bit different design. I've got this little nub on here, and you'll see a little bit later why that is there. So the next step is to get these other floor timbers in here and then fit all of the floor planking. I've got the front sole all dry fitted in there now. Now some of you may be wondering what this slot here is for. Well, One of the things that Steve had asked for is for the floors to be removable so that he could wash out the boat very easily. So what I found was this latch and it is a stainless steel that is brass plated and it has a pin that pops out on one end like that. So what this will do is I'm going to drill a hole here in the uh, mast 
partner, or sorry, sorry, the mass step. And then this will be inset in here like so. And I'll put another little brace across here for that screw. So that way you can lift this and pop that pin in there so it'll hold it in. And then on the back side here, I'll put a couple of pins for so that you'll put the fl floor down and then slide in those pins and then close up that latch. So it should be very easy to lift up on this lever and then pull the entire floor up out of the boat in order to wash it. Now I'm going to do the very same thing to the aft floor so it too can be removable. So now my next step is to get all of these pieces cleaned up and sanded and then assembled permanently. Now that the soles are all fitted properly, I can turn my attention to finishing the inside of the hull, starting with an epoxy fillet at each one of the bulkheads.
After some light sanding, I then applied the final coat of varnish to all of the mahogany bulkheads. After the varnish was dried, I applied two coats of an epoxy barrier coat primer to the inside of the hull. I'm going to use this uh, total bilge paint for the inside of the hull. Um, it's really a good, strong, it's a, a one-part epoxy finish, and it gives a very nice hard finish. Um, typically, of course, it's for bilges, for lockers. Um, but Steve's use of the boat is that he expects to make a mess in there. So with those removable soles, then this will give it really a nice protective surface to the inside of the hull. So I'm going to ultimately put two coats of this on. I'm going to apply it with this foam roller and I've got a really nice new natural bristle brush here to tip with. Always put the lid on there so it doesn't dry out. On these sides here where I've got these chamfered panel, I'm going to brush all of that on there. Uh, what I've found is that this uh, bilge paint dries very quickly, so it's quite hard to actually tip it very well. So I'm ending up with a little bit of a stippled texture on the hull, which is okay with me but I don't think it would look very good here on these panels. So in this case, I'm going to brush the paint on.
Well, I'm all finished with the soles. I've got them all put together and sanded. Now I want to put uh, a little bit of uh, preservation on here uh, so that the raw wood has a little bit of protection. So I'm going to use this Total Boat Danish Teak Sealer. Now Steve has a mixture of uh, oil that he's putting on the decks of Arabella and it requires that he's going to be using filtered linseed oil. Now filtered linseed oil it's important because linseed oil uh, by itself has micro, mi microbes in it that in UV light it will turn black. So the fact that it's filtered, it won't, that won't happen. Uh, you have to buy filtered linseed oil in pretty large quantities. So Steve suggested just waiting to have the actual finish on it uh, that he would, he'll put that on this sole when he does the deck of Arabella when he does maintenance. But I wanted to get something on it here so that it was a little protected. Um, this certainly is probably only good for one season. Uh, but anyway, it will brighten up this cedar a little bit and make it look a little nicer as well. Uh, it's important that you do not varnish the sole of a boat. A varnish will get very slick when it gets wet. So you want to keep the wood as natural as possible, which basically is a non-skid surface. Um, that's why you usually you use an oil to preserve the decks and soles of boats, well, soles that are open to the elements at any rate. You can see here I'm working on the bottom of it and just kind of brushing it on and you can see it, it um, penetrates the wood very nicely. Uh, it also shows some of the beauty of this cedar. Well, that's it for the bottom. We'll flip it over and get the uh, top side. Well, it's looking more and more like a finished boat every day. It's a good thing because launch day is fast approaching. So that's it for this episode. Uh, and the next thing that's up is to do all of some thwarts, knees, and seats. So as always, thanks for watching. And remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful. Mm -hmm.